my research program uh, at the University of Maine is looking at uh, reproduction and development of cold water corals um, and also looking at the distribution of cold water corals across the globe. Um, and so my research program this year focused in, in two different areas, one in Alaska uh, up in the north and the other in Antarctica down in the south. Uh, and both of these projects were looking at how uh, cold water corals reproduce and develop larvae and survive and produce populations through time. Well, I've always been interested in the ocean and I'm trying to like broaden my horizons. When we're growing up, we learn like dolphins and whales and <laughs> sharks and it's just really interesting to me that there's so much out there that you know most people don't know too much about. The Western Antarctic Peninsula is warming very rapidly and the Gulf of Maine is warming too and so basically in understanding whether or not these species can acclimate to these stresses, we need to know whether the larvae can. Cold water corals form the very base of the ecosystems. So they're uh, what we call habitat forming. And so they produce this habitat that many thousands of other species use uh, to be able to survive. We have fish that lay their eggs around, around corals. We have other invertebrates that form a uh, food source for other large organisms. They're at the very bottom of the ecosystem. We look at processes from the bottom up. And so if you destroy that bottom level, uh, if that bottom level is no longer being able to survive, um, then you affect everything else in the ocean. The poles are an area where warming is happening at a greater rate and in certain areas, particularly in Alaska, where acidification is happening at a much greater rate. And so these form areas where we can study processes now that will be happening in the Gulf of Maine. The Gulf of Maine is already starting to warm. And so what is going to happen to the cold water coral ecosystems that are here in the Gulf of Maine? And so that's where it all ties in. We always talk about how like everything that we're looking at, nobody's really ever seen before. And uh, we have the baseline information on like primnoa and all these other species and you got to know it like we have to learn there's so much to explore so far like so we start in Alaska and Antarctica and like Gulf of Maine if it starts to see effects it'll be next. So I think gaining these experiences at an undergraduate level um, really gives these guys an idea of where they want to go in life even if it isn't in marine science I think that um, has brought a little bit of what it takes to be a scientist in the field, to be able to collect that data. You can take that into your, your next career, whatever that might be. It took a little while being down there to be like, I'm in Antarctica, this is amazing. And you know, all of a sudden we, we got off the boat to set up this marine mammal camp and I was just like, I'm standing on Antarctica. And it was kind of bizarre. The fjord is beautiful. The water is like this teal color. Like you can't even describe it, it's so pretty. And the two dives that I got to do were amazing, seeing Primnoa for the first time not in a vial. It's this beautiful branching coral, and like I knew it was, but it's 10 feet long and pops out of the wall, and it was just amazing. I was really excited about going to UMaine and like getting to meet Dr. Waller. When I got this opportunity to go and see her like in action, like not just in the lab, like actually doing these things that I'd read about her doing, uh, it was like fulfilling a dream, and it definitely made me realize that this is really what I want to do.